To finish up this series on basic logic, I just want to show you one more object that's really useful, at least it has been to me, in all of my patching. So this object is called select. I'm going to type n to make a new object here, and then type in the word select. So you can see select's job is to output bangs based on input matching. So what does that mean? Select looks for a stream of data coming into its inlet and looks for the specific number that you have told it to find. So let's say I want to find the number in this counter over here, I want to find the number 8, the last number it's going to output before it reverts back. So I type select 8 and hit enter. And then I'm going to take my output from my counter, or actually, let me grab this one. And my outlet here is to bang if input matches 8. So since it's a bang, we're going to show that with a button. Just make that a little bit bigger. And turn on my toggle here so that we can see if it's working. Okay, it is. So you see that when my counter gets up to 8, my button turns on. So what is the difference between this equals object and this select object? Because this one, this equal, is also looking for just a number, right? This is what looking for 1, this is looking for 6, and this is looking for 8. So the difference here is in the output. The equals objects, just like all the other logic objects, are outputting 1s or zeros. We can see this with the number box. And the select object is outputting a bang. So just for comparison's sake, I'm going to add a bang over here to my equals object. And let's see what happens. So the button right here under this equals object is constantly on because every single time it gets a change. So every time the metro is banging, just like up here, this button is being triggered. Whereas here, I'm only sending a bang every time I get the number 8. This becomes really important if you need to make something happen based on whether there's a 1 or a 0, but it can't take in a 1 or a 0. So, for example, let's turn this off. I could take this select object and actually chain it under my equal and look for the number 1. And then if I want something to happen, like to trigger a message, I can have it only trigger every time I see a 1. So in this case, this is a little bit redundant. I don't now need to have this equal sign with my select object. It would do the exact same thing if I got rid of my equals object and just went straight from the counter into my select object. So the question is, do you need a 1 or a 0, or do you need a bang? And that's how you can decide when to use the select object or an equal sign. Two other quick things about select. It's also known as cell, so you can abbreviate it as just S-E-L. You can also use select with multiple arguments. So if I wanted to know about more than one integer, let's say I'm looking for 22, but I'm also interested in 20, 15, 11, I could do that. And notice that now I have more inlets and more outlets on my select object. If I hover over that, you can see that it says bang if input matches 15 and bang if input matches 11. So now I have an outlet for each of my arguments down here. That way you don't have to use multiple select objects if you don't need to. So just as a further illustration of that, let me add in some arguments here. So I want to bang on beat 1, 3, 5, and 7. I use command D to duplicate. Now you can see that I've created a little sequence here. I have bangs happening here in a row in a steady beat. If I wanted to change that, I could change, say, let's do beat 6 and 7 instead, and you can see that my rhythm is a little bit 
different now. This becomes really handy for musicians and other people who need to set up rhythmic or timing patterns.